Today I'm going to look at a very common need that I regularly encounter in designing client websites, which is the need to display small inline HTML tables inside of Webflow content. In the case of many of the projects that I build, clients need the ability to put small pricing tables or small hours of operation tables, just like these ones, inside of their website at any point, at any time they need to. And the problem here, of course, is that Webflow does not natively support HTML tables in any form. It does not support the formatting of them. It does not support the placement or the creation or the editing of them. And we run into a barrier where there is no way to represent data neatly in a tabular format that my customers can create and define on their own. So this has become a recurring problem. Now it turns out that there is a way to do that, as you can see here. And I'm gonna walk through today my particular solution, which was to allow the creation of these tables using Markdown and by enabling the processing of Markdown content inside of Webflow's rich text elements. I'm gonna show you how I did that. I'm gonna show you how you can do it on your own site as well. But first let's look at what this experience will look like to the customer, meaning to my customer, the website owner. They need the ability to edit and administer this content and that needs to be relatively easy for them. This is what that is going to look like. This is the HTML editor view built into Webflow and this same article is being shown right now with, as you can see, these HTML embed elements. If you weren't aware, about two years ago, I believe, Webflow added the ability to insert these raw HTML embed elements directly inside of your rich text elements. This allows you to simply create uh, an HTML embed, insert some custom code, some script, or whatever you would want, and it will be emitted raw into your rich text content. Now in this case, this is perfect for my needs. What I'm gonna do here is create my own HTML embed anytime I want and wrap it in and, and put markdown content in it wrapped in this pseudo element, this pseudo HTML element, which I've just called markdown. I could have named this anything I want, I could have named it Bob but I needed a way to identify where there is markdown in my finished rendered page that needs to be converted. And this was the easiest way to do it without forcing myself to do this across all HTML embeds. I want the versatility to use this any way I want. So this is a nice compromise for identifying where I have markdown content that I want my markdown processor to convert. From the customer's standpoint, this is probably not ideal. This would be, it would be great to simply have a table editor to be able to add rows and columns. But in this particular situation where I'm needing to give the customer the ability to embed tables anywhere they want and to do it with relative ease and no chance of really damaging the website, the website content or the website design, this is a pretty convenient way to do it. The specification for creating tables in Markdown, you can see it here, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, essentially involves specifying your table header row, and then this, what looks like a horizontal bar to indicate that the headers have ended, and then you've got one line per row of content, and each cell is, is separated with this vertical pipe delimiter. There's a lot of versatility in this format. You can do a lot with it. If you want to find out more, simply go online and look for markdown tables and you'll find different formatting options there. Now in the implementation that I've used here, I've used Showdown.js, which I'm going to show you how it processes markdown. I'm also going to point you to its documentation so you can have a look at what the options are here. But before we do that, I want to talk about Markdown in general. In case you're not familiar with it, this is essentially the Markdown syntax guide. All Markdown is is a way to annotate plain text content in an easy way that allows you to, to indicate how you want it to be displayed. 
For example, for headings, I can put a hashtag in front and a space and Markdown will identify that as a heading level one, two hashtags, heading level two, three hashtags, heading level three. If I run that through a Markdown processor, that gets converted to its HTML form, which a browser can then render. And this is the entire point. There are many, many, many different tags here that I can create. I can create links, I can create footnotes, super text, uh, formulas, bold and italic text. There are many different things. And this is the general Markdown guide. There are also a lot of extensions to the Markdown guide for supporting specialized code formatting and syntax highlighting. If you wanted to embed, for example, JavaScript into your blog entry, that's exactly the direction you would go. Ordered lists, unordered lists, and many, many more things. So in general, most of this is pretty useless in the Webflow world because Webflow already has a fantastic rich text element and a fantastic rich text editor. When you design a website for your clients, you would want to give them the ability to see what they are creating as they're creating it. And that is entirely the point of Webflow's WYSIWYG rich text editor. If I want to type some content in here, and I want to make it an ordered list and I want to italic and bold, I can do that directly in the editor. That's the entire point of having an editor interface. But in the case of tables, that is not possible. So we use Markdown for that purpose. This has obviously been a very often requested need in uh, among the Webflow development community. But I think a lot of people haven't really considered when and where this is especially needed. So I want to caution you against using it where it really has no value. Tables, absolutely, it's fantastic. Webflow cannot do that on its own. For other syntax and formatting needs, use the rich text element, its native capabilities as much as you can. That would be my personal approach. So as I said before, the tool that I'm using to convert the markdown to HTML is known as Showdown. It is the Showdown JS library. And essentially what we have is a small piece of script, which I will walk you through its operation and how to set it up for yourself, that uses Showdown JS to convert all of the markdown elements that I've created here into its according HTML. And it will replace this entire piece of code, including these pseudo HTML markdown elements, which aren't known to HTML, we'll replace all of this with the finished and rendered HTML table in this case, or whatever markdown you happen to have here. And that allows me to create exactly what I'm looking for in my resulting HTML. So the showdown JS library needs to be imported, and then you'll need a small script to help it identify where the markdown is you're converting and to actually do the conversion. So Showdown has a great wiki tab. So if you go to GitHub, have a look at Showdown.js, this will have all of the details on how to configure it, all of the different options. It'll also have a lot of details on things such as table formatting, which is incredibly, incredibly helpful. Uh, table formatting in Markdown is not a native part of the Markdown specification. However, there has been quite a bit of standardization in the syntax for representing a table. And as it happens, Showdown JS has that built in. You simply have to turn it on. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's take a look at the project. This is the actual designer view of the project. Right now, I'm looking at the article page. This article page is the only place I want markdown conversion. I could do it site-wide, but it happens that this is the only place I'm going to allow the customer to, to put that. So this is the only place I'm gonna bother looking for and transposing the markdown into HTML. If I use the super handy code mode Chrome browser plugin to look at the scripts, this is what I am seeing. This is the head of the page, this is the body of the page. Now, obviously, you can edit this through the page settings itself, but this is this is the most convenient way to see this large and full screen. So in the top of the page in the head, I simply have style, style element. And that style element, in my case, really consists of two parts. 
One is that I want to hide the markdown elements. Because my elements aren't real elements, normally uh, a web browser would simply show the content of it, assigning no meaning or formatting significance to the, the term markdown itself. But the problem is that the user experience is that when someone comes to the website, they'd see the page render, they'd see the markdown raw, unconverted code as the page is loading. And then once the page is loaded and the jQuery then identifies and converts the markdown to HTML, they'd see it get swapped out with the resolved HTML. We don't want that experience, so we're gonna hide it from the beginning. And all we do to do that is, is, is display colon none. The rest of the style here is simply my desired table formatting. Now it's important to recognize here because Webflow does not have native support for tables, it does not have any way for you to specify the table formatting that you would want inside of the designer interface. You need to write that CSS yourself. If you're uncertain how to do that, there are a ton of great online references. You don't actually need to style it. Most likely you will want to so that it will match the look of your website. In this case, I kept mine very, very simple and this CSS creates this look. This is the important part that actually does the heavy lifting, so to speak. These scripts will go at the bottom of the page just before the closing body tag. And it begins by importing the showdown.js library itself. So I specify this script line. You can simply copy and paste that. I'll show you how to do that as well. And then I need to go through, find my markdown, uh, and then convert it. And this script here is a piece of jQuery that is going to execute once the page has been completely loaded and the DOM has been completely rendered. And it is now ready at that point to process. So this is perfect. I'm going to do it in a very simple way. I'm simply going to set up the converter once. Here I'm setting up and configuring the showdown converter. And as I mentioned, there are many, many options that you can, you can read through on the wiki page to see what, what capabilities you would want. All your showdown options are gonna be buried under here. And there are a lot of them. There are a lot of capabilities here. In our case, the only one that really matters is I need to turn on support for tables. I want it to identify markdown that represents tables and I want it to convert it to an HTML table and that is it. And in order for that to happen, I need to say tables colon true and of course the comma as a configuration setting. That's the only change that I've made. Everything else has been pretty much default. After that, I want to go find my markdown elements to convert them. So I'm going to search for all of my markdown elements. I'm going to iterate through each of them and I'm simply going to replace them, the outer HTML, which includes bracket markdown bracket, that pseudo element, with the converters uh, markdown generated HTML. So I'm going to take the markdown content, run it through the converter, create my HTML, and then replace it. And that is it. <clears throat> it takes the markdown that you saw before and turns it into this nice, neat, HTML table. Very simple and very straightforward. So there's not a lot of magic going on here, but there's an enormous amount of capability. One of the big advantages is, is that when you do this, you could then embed these little chunks of markdown anywhere you want in your website. In many cases, this is not the, an important capability for your clients because you have specific areas for specific things that were specifically designed to show that information in a specific way. But in the case of more versatile situations, news articles, a blog, you need a lot of versatility in there. You might need to embed a code excerpt or you might need to be able to embed some special third party chunk of information. Or you might want to do, in this case, HTML tables. All of those situations will benefit from support for Markdown. So this is exactly how you make that happen. Now make it this easier for you to play with and to implement. I have put this all together into a code pen and you can see the sample HTML here, which looks like this. You could see uh, in a pseudo 
Webflow generated page. I'd have my HTML and I'd also have generated my markdown tag with my markdown content. Whatever it is, here's a heading one, here's a table, and that's it. I've got my CSS, and then I have my script, which is in this case just the jQuery, which is going to embed it. Uh, important to note here that the uh, the showdown script is in here. It's simply not shown as part of the JS because it is configured here as well as uh, jQuery itself. So I've got the jQuery script reference here. I've got the showdown script referenced here. That's the way that uh, CodePen handles external script references conveniently. And you can see here in the bottom that the rendered markdown gets rendered and appears here. Here is that heading one. And here is the table right below it. And these t these colored stylings and so on got applied to the table to give it a little bit of formatting. Very simple, very straightforward, incredibly powerful. I hope that this helps you.